today we're going to talk about the Case Labs SMA X uh, version, and I have it dual tone. Actually, the outside is white, and inside is black. Uh, I got this case because I'm going to be doing a Rad Extreme update to patients, and I will most likely change the name of the bill to something completely different when I start this update. So, I'm just looking over at my screen on what size was kind of weird. <laughs> so, pretty much the plan is to use the Case Labs SMA-X and add on some updates, add on some uh, parts from Case Labs themselves. They have the 3x120 grill, which I will be putting on here. They also have a pedestal, which I will also be putting on here. And we're going to chuck the rig. We're going to chuck a bunch of rags in there, pretty much. We're going to stuff um, <laughs> an, in, an indecent, I know, a, a, just a, a, an improper amount of rags in this field is what we're going to do. I'm going to put a 3x120 in the roof. I'm going to put another 3x120 in the pedestal. And I'm also going to add in, um, add in a uh, 4 by 120 in the pedestal. And, um, hold on, I think I got myself confused here. There's going to be a 3x120 in the front, 4x120 in the roof, 4x120 in the pedestal, and another 3x120 in the pedestal as well. Uh, the pedestal is not here. I haven't even got a chance to order it yet. I have to wait for my funds to come as they will, and then I will order as I can without pretty much uh, putting myself on the street. <laughs> you know, it kind of kind of don't want to do that. So that is the plan. But right now, we're going to do an overview of the Case Labs SM8X. Case Labs SM8X comes with a bunch of uh, accessories, and a few of them. Uh, two of them I've, I've actually already used, but I'll show you the bag that came in. I've attached the motherboard handle already. Uh, see if you guys can see that. Yeah, you can. Okay, I've attached the motherboard handle already. It came in a little plastic bag. Um, I've had to switch out one of the springs on the door because it was it was sticking a whole lot. It still kind of sticks. That's the uh, the back door here, which I will show you here in just a sec. And so it give you a bunch of springs here. You may need to replace yours when it comes. It really depends. Um, I know I heard on a forum somewhere that if your door is sticking a lot, if it's a little hard to get open, you can use a flathead or a screwdriver of some kind and kind of spread the spring a little open a bit more. Spread the latch a little, a little further open, and it should be a little easier. You got um, grommets, uh, hole, hole caps for the insides. You have your stand. You have your foot foot stands for the bottom of the case. Uh, you have screws for H for your hard drives and SSDs. You have tie wraps um, for your cable management, which it it comes with a, a good amount of those tie wraps. But you probably will need more depending on what you're doing. I know I would. It also comes with um, comes with drive bay install uh, flex bay installs pretty much you use these when you're going to install your CD drives if you're going to install them it doesn't come with the mounts for the CD drive installs by default because a lot of people when they buy these cases especially at this price point they're most likely people who don't really use CD drives a whole lot anymore maybe they have some other extreme install or some other uh, huge uh, hard drive storage area already set up so that they don't have to install a bunch of drives into the case I myself have a four terabyte storage backup already, so I'm not going to be installing a bunch of big drives into my uh, case, into my computer. I don't have a need to do that anymore. I'm pretty much almost completely SSD. The only spin disk drive I have in my computer is my game drive, and that's actually a laptop drive. It's not a big drive, so that's definitely not a problem. I won't need too many of these. I am um, thinking about using a fan controller in this update. So I probably will have to use them then. Other than that, you have a bunch of extra screws um, and a ton of other little accessories. Your motherboard standoffs. You, you have more stuff in here than you actually need. So, but because they, they give you so much extra stuff, you have options, and that's really what buying a case lapse case is pretty much about. It's about giving yourself options. If you don't want 
to buy a case that is static. It is uh, pretty much, it's not gonna, you can't expand it anymore. You can't change it around so much. Where the RADs install is where the RADs install, it's not gonna change. Where the hard drives install is where they're gonna install, you can't change that. Where the uh, fan controls and all that, they all have a set place in the case and you can't change it around at all. If you don't want that kind of case, this is the kind of case you want. It's a modular case. You can do all kind of things with it. And uh, let's go ahead and let me open up the case here. Let me open it up. The, uh, it does, as, you, as you can already see, it does have a window on it. But there's tape on the window. And I don't even know if you can see the tape on the... Yeah, you can. Okay, cool. There's uh, tape on the window that I'm not going to take off yet. It's just a protective cover. And since I'm not going to install anything yet for... for maybe a few months actually. Uh, the tape is left on the window. You have a removable hard, removable hard drive, no. You have a removable motherboard tray. Uh, you have a ton of room in here. And let's talk about the options that comes with uh, standard 4x120 with the, the cover plates right off the back in both the roof and the bottom floor. 2x120 uh, flex drive bay area for radiator install. Uh, and then you have a, a room for the 3x120 inside, which I've said already. As you see, you have your grommets everywhere, and they're pretty well placed, even uh, down below. So you have a ton of room, and you can see my whole hand actually fits back here. There's a lot of room for your cables back here. Uh, this top area is the 120 millimeter top cover uh, that Case Labs is, is, is doing now, and it'll allow me to install an 80 millimeter radiator with fans in the uh, top area and I can do push pull because I still have space inside the case to put a bank of fans on the bottom as well. So push pull and the only thing people are going to see on the inside of the case is that one row of fans on the bottom because everything else is hidden in your top bunker here. And that is awesome, it's, it's great. The springs I was talking about earlier, these guys here, the uh, clamps here, uh, the ones in the back of the case, at the back of the case, step, uh, were sticky for me a lot. They, it was very hard to get that door open. It's still kind of a challenge to get that door open. But I found an easier way to do it by just pulling from the bottom instead of actually pulling the door handle. And that, that works for me. The entire case has Phillips uh, screws. Uh, it's, there's no rivets in the case. The whole case can come apart very quickly if you wish it. Even so, the door itself can come right off, easy. Um, the case, actually you can flip the motherboard tray to reverse. And I am working a magic trick here because I'm trying to get this, there we go. All right, and uh, the uh, whole case can be flipped to reverse ATX. That is done stock, you don't need to buy anything for that. That is one of the features of the case. And now uh, let me show you how that works here. You can see it's pretty pretty empty in here. You can change around everything. The power supply bracket. If you don't want to install the bracket, I mean you don't want to use the power supply in the bottom or the top. There is a power supply mount bracket that you can install on the side rails here and mount it vertically. So that's um, vertical, horizontal, horizontally. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much uh, mount it this way, uh, up and down. I'm having a brain fart. So let me close this. All right. In the back area, this is the the case uh, comes ready for uh, everything from micro. I think it's from micro ATX to um, ATX to standard ATX. I don't think it's the ATX. I'm not sure. I have to double check the uh, manuals and what have you. It did come to a decent little dis display manual, what have you. I haven't, I haven't really read it, but it came with it. Um, and uh, one of the great features that many people love about their case labs is these lovely little spin things that just, you untwist them until they just pop out. You know, once they pop, see, they just pop right there. Now you down here, pop. Next one here, and pop. And now you just smoothly slide it, slide it out. Now if I wanted to change this uh, case to reverse ATX, I would slide the motherboard tray all the way out flip it, slide it, um, undo a bunch of things really. But when I can undo it all and flip the tray over and slide it right back in on the other side. Pretty much you'll 
flipped everything about the case, the window panels and all that, and then just slide it on the other side. I'll have reverse ATX, ready to go. Yeah, it takes a little bit of time to pull it apart and, uh, and redo it back over again. But uh, people such as Ronza Nut have uh, displayed exactly how, how awesome it is to do this and the reasons you would do it if there were certain components in your case such as your GPU uh, heat sinks, like an EK heat sink, and you want people to be able to see the coolant running through the heat sink, which usually they can't once the uh, build is installed, or you want someone to see certain features, maybe, maybe you want to think about doing reverse ATX. And, um, it's nice that in one batch, this case can do that if you need to, and still have all the uh, room for the radiators, without, so it can do it without actually interfering with anything. To the back, you have uh, just a ventilated back area. You can get this uh, in a bit of a, I think it's unventilated, and I don't, I'm not sure if you can get it with a window. I don't think you can, but it's nice nonetheless. I see I'm going to pull from the bottom here. There we go. If I tried to pull the handle, we would have been sitting here for like two minutes and you would have heard a whole bunch of cussing because it, uh, it's, it's kind of difficult to get the, to use the handle to get it open for whatever reason. You have your, um, your wires here, power, reset, HDD, nicely sleeved, two USB 3.0 cables. You need two because there's four USB 3.0 ports on the front. You only have uh, two ports per cable. I don't know what the heck I'm going to do with the second cable because my board only has one USB 3.0 port. So I don't know. I'll figure that out. I don't know if I want to run an adapter or not. I don't necessarily need all four USB 3.0 ports working. But uh, we'll see. I, I probably will just leave it at just the two USB 3.0 ports, USB 3.0 ports uh, going there and just be done with it. You got your switches uh, running here. And like I said, it, it's, it's nice that they sleeve everything. It's all nicely black. You have hard drive base, SSD base, and a 3.5 inch hard drive base here. Uh, right here, so this is where you install your hard drives. It's a very nice solution to keep it uh, to keep it uh, pretty much nice and make it easier for cable management by putting them all here like that in a nice row. Uh, grommets, grommets, um, cable tie hookups, all up and around. Now. When you're going extreme, I would think that uh, you probably need more than what you have here as far as your cable tie points go. Uh, you probably need more than that, especially since you're on a motherboard tray. Because it's a removed motherboard tray, of course, there's not a, um, there's not a bunch of uh, cable tie points on the back, but you're most likely going to have to put some there yourself if you're going uh, crazy with the build. you got a whole bunch of drives, you may even have a fan controller and all this. You got all those cables right there. I don't know if these is, are going to be enough, but it's uh, you do have a, a good bit as it is, but you, you, you most likely would need more. Um, but now that we went over the back, let me uh, see if I can redo the camera up a bit here and let's talk about the, uh, the top bay area. All right, with the top off, we can now see the uh, one, two, three, four, uh, four by 120. And there are 15 millimeters spaced apart for radiator mounts. And if I'm correct, this is actually a drop-in mount. So I can unscrew the bolts here and it will actually allow me to put the radiator on, fans and everything, and then just drop it right back in here and bolt the screws in place and be done with it. I don't actually have to somehow work magic with my hand as I am um, inside the case to get the uh, the radiator mounted as you would in a usual case. You, um, right now you're looking at from back to the front and you um, kind of turn around here. There we go. As you see there's an open area here to help you um, pull your cables through or tubing through or uh, if need be however way you want to do it. Uh, this open area here, that's what it's for. You have one, two, three, and four cable routing holes to route your fan cables through, or whatever else you need to route through here. Most likely it's going to be your fan cables for your fans. And route those through. And that is uh, it, that's pretty much it for now that I can show you. Uh, let me give you one last shot at the front. 
This is the Case Labs Estimate X Edition, two-toned, and uh, matte white on the outside, matte black on the inside. This is it's gonna take some time for this update. There's a lot of things I need to get. I need to get a uh, fan controller. I need to get more fittings. I gotta get the rads. I haven't got the rads yet. Uh, there's gonna be a new pump that that I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be using the MCP 655 pump. So it, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of decisions I haven't made yet as to how it's going to go, acrylic or tubing or mixture. All these things are going to take time and money and all that because this is not a sponsored thing. It's just uh, something I'm, I want to do for myself. I've always wanted a premium case for my bill. It was always the original plan. Uh, and um, I'm glad I finally able to be able to pull it off. So I got the case here. I got to get the pedestal and all the rest of the stuff. So over time, you'll see a, a bunch of other videos about this until we finally reach uh, utopia, as they say, and the finish line. And um, I'm gonna just take you guys along the journey with me as I go through this. So, but right now, this was an overview of the Case Labs SM8X. Thank you for watching. Check you later. or uh, if need be, however way you want to do it. Uh, this airplane area here, is, uh, that's what it's for. You have one, two, three, and four cable routing holes to route your fan cables through, or whatever else you need to route through here. Most likely going to be your fan cables for your fans. And route those through. And that is uh, it, that's pretty much it for now that I can show you. Let me put the top back on. And this top actually uh, has Honestly, it actually only goes on one way. I have to make sure. I know. It goes on both ways, but it actually it only goes on one way if you think about it. <laughs> so I have to uh, make sure it goes right. Is this the right way? Nope, nope. The next way around.
Once again, sorry for those with headphones. I know that kind of hurt your ears. We're back. Okay. And now, uh, let me give you one last shot at the front. This is the Case Labs Estimate X Edition, two toned and uh, matte white on the outside, matte black on the inside. And I can't wait to, uh, to do this update. I can't wait to do this build. Um, it's going to take me some time to get all the parts I need. It's going to take me a good amount of time to get all the parts I need. I need uh, more ads, more fittings, and I haven't decided whether I'm doing tubing or acrylic yet or whether I'm going to do a uh, mixture of both and just do uh, acrylic in the main areas that you can see and do tubing in the areas you can't, which it won't be that many. Um, so I'm not sure about how, how that's going to go yet, but we shall see. Um, Like I said, uh, like, I, like I was saying, this is it's gonna take some time for this update. There's a lot of things I need to get. I need to get a uh, fan controller. I need to get more fittings. I gotta get the rads. I haven't got the rads yet. Uh, there's gonna be a new pump that that I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be using the MCP 655 pump. So it, it's, uh, it's it's a lot of decisions I haven't made yet. Like I said, how it's gonna go, acrylic or tubing or mixture. All these things are gonna take time and money and all that because this is not a sponsored thing. It's just uh, something I'm I want to do for myself. I've always wanted a premium case for my build. Was always the original plan, uh, and um, I'm glad I finally able to be able to pull it off. So I got the case here. I got to get the pedestal and all the rest of the stuff. So over time, you'll see a, a bunch of other videos about this until we finally reach uh, utopia, as they say, and the finish line. And um, I'm going to just take you guys along the journey with me as I go through this. So, but right now, this was an overview of the Case Labs SM8X. Thank you for watching. Check you later.